This video is meant to serve as a brief tutorial for performing a regression on your calculator. Um, now remember, whether you're doing a regression on the calculator or if you're just doing a regression by hand, it's a regression is still the process of trying to fit data to an equation. So ultimately our goal is to come up with an equation. Uh, but of course for data, means that we have to go through regression process. Now I'm going to be using the sinusoidal regression paper, uh, specifically the uh, temperatures, those 12 temperatures uh, that are at, uh, at the top as my data points for this, again, for this tutorial. All right, well, that, that is the first thing we need to do. We need to get this data into the calculator. And to do that, I will go to the stat menu, the stat menu, uh, and stat edit. Now when I go to stat edit, hopefully I will see an, uh, some columns, typically L1 and L2. In fact, those are the ones that we want. If you are missing L1 and L2, we'll talk about how to fix that at the end of the video, um, which that's actually a problem if you don't have those, so you could fast forward to the end of the video to watch that. Now if you have data in L1 or L2, you do want to get rid of it, and there's two ways to do that. One way is to put your cursor in the middle. Uh, not necessarily in the middle, but just in the data, and you can one by one hit the delete button, and you'll delete uh, the data uh, one by one. That might take a while if you have a lot of data, so the other way is put your cursor at the very top and hit the clear button, but then you have to hit enter. Clear enter will make all the data disappear. So I'm going to put in my 12 months of, uh, well, literally my 12 months, and then I'm going to need to put in my 12 temperatures. And so uh, just take your time, put them in there, use the enter button uh, to get them to be actually, uh, well, entered into the calculator. Remember we went to stat edit L1, L2, Okay, and what we want to do now is we want to get this data graphed. Now, to get this data graphed, it's a little more, a little bit more work than just hitting the graph button. I'm going to need to uh, turn on what's called the stat plot uh, feature. So go to second y equals, which is the stat plot setup screen. I'm going to choose number one, and essentially I'm going to just turn on the scatter plot. Okay, you say, well, what's the big deal here? Well, the calculator doesn't normally look for data unless you tell it to. So when we turn on the scatter plot, it's going to look in L1 and L2. You can see that that's part of this screen, um, and it's going to then graph that data as a scatter plot. I could change the type of graph. I could change it to a line graph. A histogram doesn't make sense. And so we just kind of default to the ones that are here. One more thing, you gotta change the window. You gotta make the window um, match the kind of data that we uh, typed in. So I think our data was more like 12 months. I'm gonna go from zero to 13 because I like to sometimes go a little bit beyond uh, the edges of the data. And the Y window, it's the same thing. It's my temperatures. So I like to start at zero because I can. And I know the highest temperature is 85 degrees, but let's go to uh, 100 degrees just because, again, we can. So we're making our window kind of match the data. Now, what's this X scale and Y scale? Well, it's just the size of the little tick marks on the screen. It's purely a visual thing. But if you want to make your Y scale so that it goes by like 10 degrees, sure, you can change that. Um, it's not going to affect anything algebraically. Okay, if you followed my steps and you turned on the scatter plot and you changed your window, you can hit the graph button and you should get our uh, scatter plot that, of course, looks like it should be part of a sine wave. Now, if you didn't get this or if you got some extra lines that are drawing, I'll talk about some other common mistakes again when we get to the end of the video. Let's continue now and try to get the equation for this, uh, the regression equation for this data. We're going to go back to the stats screen, this time over to calc. And honestly, this is kind of a goldmine of calculations. Uh, most of these are regression calculations. You can see that there's a linear regression, um, but we want all the way down at the bottom the sinusoidal regression. So I'm going to choose sine reg, 
enter, enter. Some of you have a newer kind of calculator where you get an extra setup screen. You're just gonna slide down to calculate and hit enter again on the word calculate. And so here we go, I get my uh, values that will make the regression equation. Notice that the A value is the amplitude, the B value, it's not the period, but it affects the period. The C value uh, is uh, affecting the shift and the D value uh, is the midline or the vertical shift. Now, the one thing that's true about this regression equation is that it is in radians. What that means is that when we uh, use the equation, which we're gonna do next, we would have to make sure our calculator is in radians. Uh, that way uh, it computes the values in a way that makes sense. So what are we gonna do next? We're going to, well, we're gonna make sure our calculator is in radians. Um, the truth is I maybe should have checked that beforehand, but it's not a big deal, it still works out. But I'm gonna put my calculator in radians so that when I graph this equation, I'm gonna graph this equation on the regular y equals screen. Again, my graph actually makes sense. Notice I'm typing in the regression equation to about two decimal places. And if you did all that, and you are ready to hit the graph button, you should see your equation fitting very nicely through those uh, data points. And then of course we can do whatever we want now that we have this equation, we can trace it if we want, not knock the phone over, but <laughs> we can trace the equation. Um, for example, uh, I could trace it to May 15th uh, of course, when I hit the trace button, uh, it defaults to tracing the scatter plot. You can see in the upper left corner, it's tracing the scatter plot. But if I hit the up or down arrow, I will be able to toggle to the other graphs that are on the screen. So why am I tracing to May 15th? I believe that that's a question on the paper. May 15th is the same as 5.5. So I can actually uh, type or go exactly to 5.5 and see that the temperature would be right around 77.4 degrees. And I could also use this equation just kind of in an old school way, uh, like, uh, like input output, uh, I could actually input 5.5. And uh, that's kind of nice also, of course it comes out to be the same value uh, because that's still the Y value of the graph. That's your regression equation uh, tutorial. Now, a couple common mistakes. One of the first common mistakes is when kids uh, either accidentally or a previous student accidentally deletes the entire column. Now remember, if I'm up, on, up here at the top, what I really wanna do is hit clear. Let's say I accidentally hit delete, and oh my gosh, I just deleted L2. Now. How do I get L2 to come back? Well, if you scroll over to the end, you'll see there's a blank space, and that space is designated for L2. But the problem is, is that I'd like these columns to be right beside each other. So what I actually need to do is make the same mistake four more times. I need to delete all the other columns so that I now can sort of start over. I can put L2. Now that's second two, second two, is going to enable you to get the symbol L2. And then uh, maybe it would be nice if I uh, get those other columns back into place, um, at least the names of those columns. So I'm doing second three, second four, second five, and second six, and now my columns are back. Another common mistake is when students do not change their calculator to radians and try to graph their regression equation. And we wonder why our graph just looks like a straight line. Well, it's because the calculator thinks that that equation was in radi uh, excuse me, in degrees. So it's like a whole different format. Another common mistake is that students will forget the letter X. And if we forget the letter X, maybe we did remember radians, but let's say we forgot to type the letter X and we still get a straight line. That's because your calculator is actually just graphing a number. Ultimately, all this 44 or 24 sine of 0.44 minus 168 plus 60, it's just a number. 
uh, because there's no variable there. So that, that could be a problem. And if you got any type of errors, it could be that your window uh, was mistyped. Uh, what's, what's a common way to mistype a window? Um, I don't know what uh, somebody like reverses the minimum and the maximum. Um, so if my minimum and maximum is messed up, I'm going to get a window range error. There's another kind of error that you can get uh, that would be more of a statistical error, and that could be that you mistyped uh, some of your temperatures. Sometimes we just like forget one of them, and then we have 12 months not matching up with any data, and so when I try to graph it, I get a dimension mismatch. It really just means, again, that my data is not typed in correctly. I'm sure there's some other errors that uh, can happen. Um, if you got one of them, you may need to check with a neighbor or check with me and I can try to help you solve that.